very, wow. very soon. Well, Robert L. Dean, we've come to that time yes. in our program once again that we are going to be having uh, a great, great interview. And this time is with one of the people that we kind of know pretty well. Yes. You know, he's been saved for about four weeks now. Right. And, um, you know, we just thank the Lord for him. Yes. For coming back on into the fold from yes. his international touring. Yes. And everything like that. Robert L. Dean, who do we have with us today? Well, I think I know a little bit about this gentleman. Um, he is a San Diegan, and he is very influential in the gospel music community and as well as G.O.D. Radio 1 with what? Choirology every Sunday morning, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., and then repeats at 8.30 to 10.30 in the evening every Sunday. Yeah, and this is for your great, great, great choir music. And if you're like me, you love choir music, so that is the the show that you need to tune into. So are you going to introduce them? Or am I going to introduce them? Um, you, you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from San Diego, California, <laughs> and the world, coming to the G.O.D. radio platform right now, we have none other than Dr. Edward Baltrip and the curator and the director and founder yes. of Fulfillment. Better known as Eddie. That's what people know him as, Eddie. What's up, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> we Man, well, we ready for a lit show with you. Yes. See, uh, all the other folks we interview, we have a, a, a somewhat of relationship with, but right. we actually have a deep relationship going back over 35 years. Yes, yes, yes. Man, 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 so first and foremost, congratulations on your show, Choirology. Mm -hmm. uh, it is doing extremely well. You bring you bringing back the choirs and represent yes. in a good way. How did you come up with the show, Choirology, and what is your passion for the choir? Mm of people that come together for one thing only, and that is to serve and to magnify, worship and praise the one and only true and living God, Jesus Christ. And it, to me, it's the, it's kind of like that glue that keeps the church together mm -hmm. because when you bring people together it forms a camaraderie that cannot be denied um, um they say we're better together we're definitely better together this is nothing against our praise and worship teams but i feel like that choir is the foundation yes sir of the music department yes sir you know? and um but some of the, uh, the name choirology, man, because I am a choir man, it was just easy. It's the study of choir, and I've done that all my life. So, ology, choir, put it together, you got choirology. Right, and, and you said something that really struck me. Um, growing up, we didn't really have what you call a worship team. The choir was the worship team. And so, now I feel that we should go back, or we should reconnect and and draw back upon choirs. Not saying that we don't need praise teams because there's a place for everybody in the kingdom, but I feel that choirs should be back into the rightful place. Well, oh, yeah. no. well I'm going to jump in here about these choirs. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, here we go. Dr. Dr. Ball Trip, <laughs> <we> um, <laughs> I want to ask the question as a, a person that wanted at one point to direct the choir until I saw you to direct the choir. Why is it that it it looks like you have to be an athlete to be a choir director um, after seeing you direct? Can you explain that to me? Because I'm tired just watching. <laughs> well, man, I, you definitely have to be in shape and uh, put in a little work uh, uh, with your normal day routine of workout, um, cardio, man, if you don't, you can be worn out. You uh -huh. really can. I tell people all the time, you definitely have to eat right mm -hmm. and try to live a healthy life because this is like a sport. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a sport. So you have to train for it. You mm -hmm. do. People may think that just because 
you know, God has anointed you to do it, mm-hmm. that that's all the way. No, man, you're going to need something, amen, to contend with, if you will, the anointing that comes upon you because it's hard, it, this, this is a human body. It can't withheld uh, God's uh, great power mm-hmm. and anointing mm-hmm. on you. So I, I, I think you, you definitely need to be in shape, God, you know, to sum it all up. Well, well I'm going to say this, that, you know, I've been waiting to talk to you about this for years because I've been carrying a beef in my heart against you. Oh, God, you. he always got a beef. Uh, I, 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 some 30, almost 40 years ago, uh, I came to a Voices, <laughs> at the time it was the Voices of Fulfillment rehearsal at the uh, YWCA on uh, Logan. Uh-huh. And, right. and I just came to peek my head in because I've been hearing about this young, quiet, anointed. And, and, you know, that was back in the time of the Jerry Curl. So the Jerry Curl juice was flying all over the place. <laughs> But I went in there calling myself, going to check y'all out, and was going to consider being a part of the Voices of Fulfillment. I yes, came sir. into a rehearsal, and I only think y'all was in for about 20 minutes. I got in there. Folks was fully drenched with sweat. You had them singing and running around the room and everything else of that nature. And that was back in the time where I was a super athlete. I got so fed up with all the exercises and everything that you had them folks doing. And, and, and here's the bad thing about it. What? I left, went to Dr. J's, got me some chips so I could watch it. I came back two hours later, and they were still in full board. I said, this is not for me. My, my, my beef is I'm going to go back to my thing, and I'm just going to preach and play, preach and play. Many a call before you chosen. <laughs> How about that? So, so, Eddie, way back when, when you was like, 15, 16 years old, when you started this group, why did you put so much energy into them working out and singing uh, while they uh, strengthened themselves? Because I knew the type of music that we were going to be approaching definitely needed uh, endurance. Mm -hmm. You had to, and then if you were going to be doing concerts 30, minutes to an hour long, you definitely needed the endurance. One way to build your endurance is while you're singing to, if you will, do some type of workout, some type of choreography, uh, some type of movement. Um, So we did things like run while you're singing. Mm -hmm. It also helped to build the diaphragm so that you could hold notes longer Mm -hmm. and that you could strengthen the notes when you sing them. You could control them better if your diaphragm is in proper place while you're singing. And a lot of people don't know that because they're very gifted. They just sing from, you know, you're throwing it and you wonder why you're hoarse. But when you get through rehearsing after uh, uh, about 30 minutes in, you should feel it in your diaphragm as if you have been doing ab exercises. Mm Mm-hmm. Because right. that's where the strip is from. So it, it helped to build the core so that we can endure and last throughout our presentation. You know what? Even if you look on the secular side, I remember watching Making the Bands with Puff Daddy, and he had those people running in place, singing and exercising as well. So it's not just gospel. To be your best and to be able to perform when people are paying to see you, it's important that you're able to last because people want to get their money's worth. So that's important. Exactly. So let, I agree. Me, so let me ask you this question. Um, let's go all the way back to the beginning. What inspired you to start this rebel takeover mu- movement at a young, young age? Because I don't know how young you were. All I know is is that at one point they had to put you up on a step stool to direct the choir. Can you, <laughs> can, can, can you tell us what inspired you to start this movement and why are you still doing it some almost 40 years almost later? Almost 40 years, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, man, it's a combination of things. So I'm just going to give you a bucket full and you and Earl can take out, you know, what you think is important right. or not. Um, it's a combination of things. It gave an alternative and options for young people that at that time, what we call was on the streets. You know, mm-hmm. they were um, doing drugs, mm-hmm. drinking, mm-hmm. sex, the like that. 
Yeah, there it was, man. There it was. <laughs> not Believe it or not, everybody that started in fulfillment did not start in the church. Okay. So we used to go out and canvas the neighborhood. That's what they used to call it. And basically it was witnessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it gave an alternative uh, for those youth that are troubled um, in their homes and, and living in dysfunctional and abusive homes. This was like an alternative. It also was an alternative for those that grew up in strict Christian homes. Mm -hmm. And your only outlet was going to be something that identified you with Christ. Mm -hmm. So fulfillment came along as like an extracurriculum for Christian young people. So, urban ministry. You know, the, right. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So the other reason was I watched so much conflict between denominations. Mm -hmm. There was it was so much segregation and I couldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Um because at that time I didn't totally understand doctrines and things of that nature. All I knew is that we had one common denominator and that was Christ. So why couldn't we come together and worship together? with that one denominator being, common denominator being Christ. Later I begin to uh, understand about, the, uh, you know, different doctrines and things of that nature. But this brought denominations together. It broke down denominational barriers mm -hmm. and things of that nature, brought about a camaraderie and unity, you know, and then it, it uh, uh, helped to uh, at, let me, give support mm -hmm. to those while they were trying to go through this Christian journey at a young age, mm -hmm. it's always good to know that somebody else understands what you understand, or they're trying to do what it is you're trying to do, and that to see somebody else being successful and making progress, right. and all those things really help these young people to grow. So it's kind of a combination of things. Now, don't ask me, y'all, why at that age, you know, I had that type of vision. You know, I think it was, it, it was, I was doing, being a resource center and didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, you know? it, it, it makes a lot of sense because um, as, as young people and you're trying to be separate from the world, you needed an outlet. And, and I can speak for the listeners and viewers that are watching. I've been a part of the choir since I was 15 and Robert Ordine is 51, looking like you're 30, praise the Lord. But that was, <laughs> you know, I, I, but I, I grew up in church Hold and on. I had many outlets. Hold on. Yes, sir. You, you look 32. Oh. To God be the glory. Oh, 32. Nobody, 32. nobody but Jesus. <laughs> right. So, oh. I, so I was one of those who wasn't, you know, wasn't one of the rough riders on, on, in the neighborhood. I was a church kid. But even as a church kid, there were not many peers in the church like me. So I mm -hmm. found uh, another place to go to where there were people singing doing the right things that I could share with. So being a member 30 plus years, it, it was it was it was wonderful to be able to minister with like minds. Well, you, you know, Robert mm -hmm. L. Dean, I, I'm now going to get to some of the funny stuff. Yes. Because uh, cause there, there's so much to talk about from the tour. Oh, I want, yes. Uh, Eddie, I want you to talk about three things. Number one, I want you to talk about the Jerry Curl era and when you guys got delivered. Uh, number two, I want you to talk about the, <laughs> the funniest tour that you that you took and some of the, the funny things that happened while you guys were on the road as young people going all over the place. Um, okay, well, with the Jerry Joe era, man, um, I think, uh, <laughs> honestly, it, it, it gave us a, uh, how do I say this? I guess I'll just say it. Man, back then, that was the look. That was the style. Yeah, yes, so with it was. Us, I never had it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, looking at people like Prince. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Rick J. Yep. All of it just seemed like every black man needed a Jerry curl, if yes. you will. And yep. he progressed and went to a California curl. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so then it kind of became, you know, it an unspoken uh -huh. Look yes. for the tenor set. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we, we all got Jerry curls and California curls and cut our hair in shag. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was fashion. The it, choir was yeah. very, it was, it was, the choir was, was always yeah, fashion was, conscious, always. And, and that was, thank you, Red. I was good ready to say that. Always. And being that I was always fashion Yes, sir. Conscious, we always looked. I encouraged 
them yeah. to dress their best and to look their best. And part of that back then, because we had hair, right. was your hair. Right. Your hair had to be in place. And the, and the women's had hair had to be in place as well. Say it again? The women had to have their hair done as well. Exactly, man. And I think um, um, on another note, I've always thought about things in a way that, and excuse me if it come off a little too deep, that you should give your best to God. So because we have given our best mm-hmm. in so many other places mm-hmm. to so many other things, we dressed up for that. I yep. thought, well, let's, let's give our best to God. What is your best dress? Mm-hmm. You know, what is the best you can offer him in the way that you, you look? Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, don't judge me because people will judge. Back then, I didn't have this mindset that you had to dress up to come to church. No, this was all, this was all unto God. Right. Mm-hmm. It's presentation. You know, presentation. So it was, you know, it was everything. Yeah. Present, presentation yeah. is everything. Yes, sir. I believe that if people going to really view you before they hear you. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. Well, 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 well and, doctor. Dr. Baltrip, I got to ask you this question because, yes, y'all, y'all did have your do right and everything like that. The tennis section had, you know, this this dripping going on. They they had it going on. We had the on. best uniform, the best but, robes. But, but hold on, hold on. This is what I wanted to ask because, you know, just recently I threw a flag on the play because everybody's yeah. face was dead. Everybody's hair was dead. Oh, yeah. Everybody had on universal, uh, basically universal color shoes, right, you know, that they was all in line. Yeah. And there was one yeah. person over in the soprano section that had on multicolored shoes, and I was about ready to throw a flag on the play and say, "Look, you know, we're supposed to be in black today." Have you ever had to check somebody who got out of line in their shoe department that you had to say, "Look, you take them flip flops off and get 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 some heels on"? Of course, man. <laughs> many times, many times. Yes, sir. And yes, there has been. Those times when you have to have a heart of forgiveness and mercy mm-hmm. where they put the shoe on, the shoe broke, so they had to come in what they had. We understand that. But if you have it, I want you to wear what I have asked you to wear. Yes, and that's part of being disciplined. Mm-hmm. When you go to work yes. at Kentucky Fried Chicken, you wear uh, what Kentucky <laughs> Fried Chicken says wear. If you want to be a part of that organization. Right, so that's why I understand why we, we people in the Christian community sometimes try to... Um, Stand out. Not no. We try to lowball. <laughs> we try to lowball um, uniformity, and we should come to Jesus as we are. Yes, that's talking about your heart and yeah, soul. Yes, yes. But but there are standards for everything, and in the body of Christ, we should do it more than anybody because we represent the yeah. King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Now, now, yes. Doctor Ball Trip, uh, like we said, we go all the way back, and you've been in leadership for a long time. How is it? How how was it? to lead people that were at many times, some of them older than you, but yet you were the leader. How did you handle that? And how did you grow your organization? It was a, a definitely a challenge. Uh, but I will say that I think that those that were my peers as well as those that were older than me saw a leadership quality that could not be denied. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I say that humbly because back then I didn't really know and understand all the different aspects of leader people and leadership and that you had to earn the right to lead. I just did it because Mm -hmm. that's what I felt like God had inspired me to do. Um, But in addition to that, man, we had advisors. I was just Mm -hmm. thinking the same thing. Yes. So we had a set of advisors that handle the business Mm -hmm. and if you will the uh the uh the social part of what we did the as well as we had a set of christian and they were called spiritual advisors that's i'm sorry forgive me i'm sorry so we had a regular a set of advisors that did like the secular portion and the business and the social part and then we had a set of spiritual advisors And those advisory boards connected together to help me lead, but also to provide a foundation for these young people to bring about structure, to um, teach them discipline. You know, so I I think between what God had given me and having those two sets of advisors, 
man, I that's that's how I was able to do it. That's how I was able to do it. Hey Amen. One of the things that I want to ask you is um, some of the crazy situations um, that have happened to you while you were on tour. I particularly like the leaning bus story. <laughs> Man, um, I'll be real quick because I've got two of them. One of them was where we were uh, traveling on tour. And back then we had to take two bus loads because we was riding easily 80 deep um, mm -hmm. choir members and band. And while on that 91, we were coming from um, Arizona. And then we came in and we took the 91 going into LA. And one of the buses, man, had an engine issue and it stopped. And I thought it was going to be a Hezekiah Walker moment where I had to decide which choir members to take and whatever. Right. <laughs> and I remember we started panicking. Those advisors started really encouraging us praying for us. And I remember while this was happening, um, some of the, the, the mothers in the, on the uh, spiritual bus board got off the bus. They get off the bus. When I, when I thought to peek out and look, I could hear them and the bus driver conversing. And the bus driver said, ladies, you, you're going to have to get back on this bus. You know, it's done safe. And you can't be out here. We're going to have to wait for another bus, and you're going to have to take who you can take. And he was just going on. A, and they said, just give us a minute. Just give us a minute. This is back there when faith, man, extended far beyond our feelings. Mm -hmm. And they were just give us a minute. Give us a minute. And he's like, well, what is it you want to do? So he got a call on his radio. So he had to get back on the bus. Man. I never forget Mother Sanders and Evangelist Conway, and there might have been one other, went out there and laid hands on the back of the bus where they thought the engine was. Mm -hmm. They started praying, man. Then they, then they get to, told the other ones, encouraged the choir members to pray. So we on the bus praying, crying, speaking in tongues. So the man jumps back out there, hey, get your hands off the bus. They said, start the bus. He said, what are you talking about? We've got to wait for them. Start the bus now. Start the bus. He went there. <clears throat> the bus started. We shouted, cried, spoke in tongues, and cried on the side of the road. Four minutes all the way into Los Angeles, California. We were late getting there. So we had to jump off the bus, put on the put on rolls, and back then, man, you marched in. And they introduced us. We marching in crying, praising God, speaking in tongues. So the rest is history because, man, the Spirit of God fell in that place. Another time, man, was where we were on tour and uh, we, uh, uh, our bus, man, these are not funny, but somewhat funny. Our bus got um, hijacked, man, mm -hmm. by our bus driver. I was there. And, um, and, this, and when we came out, you know, we couldn't find a bus. We kept calling yep. the company. There was no answer, whatever. So, Make a long story short, we are stuck out there without transportation. And the church told us that they had to set the alarm. So we were in, I think, Compton? I think it was. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. sitting, sitting outside mm -hmm. till 4.30 a.m. Yes. Covered up with robes and just praying. Now, that's when the thug and the crips that was in the group mm -hmm. really, really was necessary. Man, them dudes got up from that tender section, and they just kept patrolling the perimeter. <laughs> it makes yes. it certain nobody was going to walk up on us. Um, I got stories, Mr. T. Um, you know, but God brought us through it. We're yeah. here today. Yeah. You know, and I believe we're better today yes. because mm -hmm. of those type of things that took place and happened. They were very aversive. You know, they, they were things that challenged our faith. But I, I, I feel we're better because of it. We're better people, you know, because of the trial, I, the I have, tribulation. I have a question too, Pastor. What, who would be your dream artist to work with, dead or alive, that you have not worked with? Because Fulfillment has worked with almost every major artist in the, in the industry. 
Um, I think, man, uh, in gospel, they could be, it could Walter, be, it, it could be anything, but you can either. Okay. Mm -hmm. In gospel, Walter Hawkins, mm -hmm. I've had a chance to work with Edwin, mm -hmm. but never with Walter, no new Walter, but never with Walter. Mm -hmm. And I think the secular artist, man, um, would be two Whitney Houston and gonna Michael say, Jackson. I knew he was going to say those two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why? And why? Um, I think um, to sum it up, all three of them in their own way and their own right had a creative genius that I would have loved to tap into mm -hmm. and really understood what it took for them to be who they were. Right. And, and how they went about producing the music that they did and that they uh, gave to us and throughout the years, you know, um, just, yeah, just all that, how they went about um, uh, production, yeah. you know, and, 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 and writing their music, what inspired them to write the songs that they write? What right. was it like for them to be on stage? I wanted to really feel that right. and understand that. So, yeah, it would be those three. So let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. What are your next big endeavors coming up in 2020? <laughs> Man, with Corona. Post-Corona. The Coco. <laughs> yeah. With Coco, man, I had, um, the best thing is we already had some things, uh, you know, that were kind of coming down the pipes and we had to sit on, uh, sit on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So we got to be creative about this, but um, we're going to release a couple of singles. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I uh, definitely want to make certain that um, that we, uh, if you will, obey the law that has been put before us with proto the protocol, uh, the social distancing mm -hmm. protocol, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. I want to keep the choir members safe, keep them well. Um, so it's going to be a challenge, mm -hmm. but I believe, man, God will make a way for us to get it done. So uh, that, and then I had to postpone several in, uh, tours and engagements. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, uh, do this tour that we have planned uh, for maybe September or November. Um, and then this year, if not this year, um, at the top of next year, we're going to celebrate um, um, I, you know, Earl and Cedric keeps up with this. So how many years will it, it be? It should be Earl? 40. 40 years. Okay. We're going to celebrate 40 years. Celebrate 40 years. And then there are some things that I'm, I'm not at liberty to speak of right now, but, <laughs> but um, that, that's just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, what we have in mind because we had to definitely regroup and reset. We had a full calendar and had all these things in mind that we were going to do you know, and um, yeah, but, God's but here delay. we are. God's delay is yeah. not denied. So we just, no, we, just, we know God, God is still up to something. Amen? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. No doubt. Well, I trust them in all the man's I trust the process. Yes. I have one more question before we wrap this up. If you were not in the music ministry, what would you be doing? Oh. Uh, Probably construction and uh, or architect. And and people don't know it. You do a lot of home decorating and stuff, correct? Yeah, home improvement, yep. um, light construction. Um, I lay ceramic tiles. Yep. Um, I can install uh, sinks, toilets, you know, paint, all <laughs> kind of stuff. And and thank God I got that from my father. He took me. I do it. I can lay bricks and do masonry. I can pour cement, all of that. And then I actually was in school, drafting school, um, because I wanted to be an architect. And um, God saw something different. And, uh, and hey, here I am today. And I'm, I'm not grateful. I'm glad about it. And, and for those that have choirs and those individual solo artists that are listening and watching, he is also a shopper, which he's hired to shop for other people, and he designs choir robes and and clothes. So I just wanted to throw that in there so people could see you for all <laughs> your many, many um, talents and gifts. My side muscles, huh? Yeah. Hey, you always yeah. preach multiple streams of income. Can, can, I, can, yeah. I, can, I, can I end the interview, Nat, now? Yeah. 
That, yes. I, I, no, I'm talking to Robert because you know he's been bullying. <laughs> uh, he said interview. I've been bullying him. I haven't. I just we're just living can, in the moment. Can, can, can I end the interview right now? Because I I got I got <laughs> a, I got some big stuff to talk about. Okay, can okay. I end it right now? Okay, praise can, the can, Lord. Can, can I put it on? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Baltrip, <laughs> um, uh, before we leave this interview, um, oh, I, I, wanted, I want two things. One of the things mm -hmm. is that uh, we're still working on that concept for the Midway because mm -hmm. um, uh, we want to bring the choir back. But um, because we're doing so much stuff virtually, um, can you tell people, one, how they can get <laughs> you and also how they can have you do a virtual seminar or a virtual workshop? Choir workshop mm -hmm. Uh, still in the midst of our social distancing where they can still tap in and get your resource because if you guys don't know it uh, Dr. Baltrip uh, it goes around uh, and I'm not just calling him Dr. Baltrip. He is, he is yeah. Dr. Baltrip mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he goes around and he teaches choirs and he trains people mm -hmm. and even if you're looking for for fashion design or styling he can do that also virtually so can you tell them how they can get to you and how they can tap into your resources during this time yes sir yes sir all my social media platforms are the same eddie voucher on instagram eddie voucher on facebook eddie voucher on twitter you can also call road one management at 619-549-3800 Again, 619-549-3839, or you can call Safe Haven Management and Consulting at 619-852-6500, and they will be there to instruct, help, and assist. Or you can call. Oh, and then, wait, I forgot, I forgot my, my other. Or you can call Mandate Records Entertainment <laughs> <laughs> and, and Listen, for, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm serious. Mandate Records Entertainment and um, Talent Agency. Mm -hmm. I'm also signed with them. And please give them that number, Dr. T. 858 650 3190. That's it. That's it. And God has blessed me, man. I mean, I don't take it for granted that um, these people want to work with me and they keep me working. I just want to say this thing. I ask God that when we are not singing at church events, concerts, and things like that, that we would be able to sing in places where people would not normally mm -hmm. come into a Christian atmosphere right. and be receive income so that I could be a blessing to my choir. We work all year long because of these three agencies, and I am grateful. We have done it all. We have got an opportunity to meet some great, magnificent, wealthy people. Yes. And if I could just say this, Mr. T, thank you for being an opportunity. Amen, yes. amen. You know, one of the things about it is that Robert Earl Dean, uh, Dr. Baltrip, Dr. Thompson, we are truly friends. We have yes. been, uh, we have grew up together. We yes. have grown in the ministry together. And when um, the one, the fun thing that me and Robert have is that um, it's like all of us are like brothers. We all have different uh, uh, roles that we play. Mm -hmm. There are times that we're together on the same platform. There yes. are times that we're on different platforms. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we know is that we can always pick up the telephone. Yeah. And so when I say, yeah. when I always say, Robert, can I end the interview? Can I end the interview? We do that because right. of the fact we really want you to realize that we are friends. Yes. We, we're the type of people that if there's one piece of chicken left, yes. we'll start fighting over it, but we'll split it. We're going to split it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, Robert, uh, bef uh, before we go, because there's so much we can talk about. There's I know just so we're much with him. Right. We're yeah. on a time. Uh, right. But, Robert, I want you just to give uh, just one of your fond memories of being in the choir because you left the choir to go to college. To go to college, yeah. And yes. then you came back. Yes, sir. You know, and so there's like these generations in the yes, choir. Yes. So can you talk about that? And then Eddie, we're gonna give you the final say, and then we're gonna go up. Well, uh, like okay. I said, like I said, I started in the choir at 15, and I'm I'm now 51, and God allowed me the opportunity to go to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and when I would come home for vacations, I would re, not join, I would come back to the choir and it was never like I was gone. What I like is the commitment of Edward Baltrip as a leader. Um, this is a person that I've never seen before like him 
in that you can be a, a entity of your own because I'm a promoter mm -hmm. and I'm a solo artist. I'm a member of Voice of Fulfillment. I'm a member of New Creation Church Choir. I'm a member of God Radio. And anything that I've ever done and needed um, Dr. Baltrip's support, he's done that and then some. For many of us that are on viewing now, I see many of the choir members who are now singers and solo artists. One that, that people will be shocked at that came through the ministry is Jazzy Faye, who yeah. is one of the mm -hmm. biggest producers in the industry <laughs> from That's Atlanta. Right. Tone. Tone. These were all members yep. of his entity. Yeah. Kim, who you, yeah. who you played, Kim Watts. Yep. Patty Brown mm -hmm. was a member. Pam Olivia, who sung with Mary yeah. J. Blige on them. Yeah. We all came out of the same ministry, so it says a lot about the foundation that we were given, the prayer life, because we did fast and shut-ins. Mm -hmm. All that culminated to who we are today. So be beyond the singing part, that's the things that stand out for me, because mm -hmm. I believe that love will show love, and that's pretty much what Dr. Eddie Boucher is about, to yeah. be honest. He's a teacher, he's mm -hmm. a mentor, he's mm -hmm. a friend, he's a pastor, he's a He's preacher. dependable, he's reliable. Yeah. He, there's so many ways that we can describe him. Yes. And, and if this sounds like a love fest, it is definitely a yes. love fest. You got to give people their flowers. Well, thank you, Jim, Seriously. Yeah, because one thank of the things you. about it is that this dude right here, he, you won't find another brother that will work harder oh, no. when you're on the team no, together. Sir. So, no, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Baltrip, um, uh, we we really need to get you back. Um, yes, so much and, we can talk and just, about. And just let you answer the people's questions. Yes. So we're going to try to get back on your calendar again. Mm -hmm. But any final words you would like to share uh, uh, with the audience? And I want to end off the whole entire show with my weapon, if that's all right with you. That's, that's totally fine with me, man. Honestly, man, I am humbled by this opportunity. Um, I always say to people that um, people don't have to do anything for you. And just because you're gifted does not necessarily mean you will get opportunity. Right. I think um, um, a lot of times people feel like, well, I deserve and they feel entitled. Yes. Mm -hmm. But believe it or not, it is by God's design that we get the opportunities that we get and that people honor you. It's all by his design. It's also by what you have put out, what you have sown, you will get it back. So a gift alone is not going to open the door. Mm -hmm. A gift alone is not going to provide the mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I want to just say thank you. Uh, thank you to both of you fellas for giving me this opportunity. And I would love to come back. Just tell me when and um, I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be here. You know yeah. what? You know, next time we're going to do it Zoom. Oh, so, that'd so, be wonderful. You know, okay. so, so that they can <laughs> see him right. and, and everything like that and see his expression. Because if you ever been, now I was never in the fulfillment, but I was around. Yes. And I just love some of the expressions that he would give folks if they hit that note like James Brown. And it looks like he's gonna give him a five out of five. You know what I'm saying? That's the truth, man. It's true. Well, brother, we we appreciate yes, we you. Do. We we thank you, thank you for so all much. that you're doing. Yes. If you guys want to uh, actually meet this brother right here and see him uh, in all that he does, please check out his his social media sites. Uh, soon as the Corona is over right. and uh, churches are back in. You could definitely see him. Uh, and go to the digital music outlets and get Eddie Bowchip and Fulfillment. The music is on there. We yeah. talked about what? What's the, what we called our slogan? The, the, the Takeover. The Takeover. Operation Takeover. Operation Takeover. All you people that are listening and watching, and you'll listen later, let's make gospel the number one genre of music. We can do it with this pandemic going on. God is setting us up and lining us up to be in the forefront for too long. We've taken a backseat to everybody else mm -hmm. and, and look at the world. We are the people that are called by his name. So that starts with you purchasing and supporting your independent artists as well as your top 40. But today is Independence Day. So let's support and let's keep pushing the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. I, can I get a plug? Can I put a plug in? Yes. Right? Do, you can put okay. three plugs in. Three plugs. <laughs> hey, here's a plug in right there. So be on the lookout. Um, I'm uh, be coming out with a book of quotes, and um, I just want to share uh, a couple of quotes with the people today to encourage them. Yeah. Don't be so quick to abort the mission or the vision.
sometimes it's just about changing the plan or the strategy. Mm. And then one of my favorite ones is, is as hard as it gets sometimes, I have to admit that life works better with God in it. Mm. Without a doubt. You know, you, you, we, need yeah. one, we, we need one more uh, to complete the Trinity, please. Okay. <laughs> All right, here it is. Trust God during the process. He's good at working it all out in the end. Well, praise the Lord. One you for the it. Father, yes. one for the Son, and one, one for, for the, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> B- Bishop, uh, doctor, introduce this song, My Weapon, sir. Listen here, coming to you live on GODRadio1.com. Eddie Boucher and Fulfillment is my praise, is my weapon. Sit back and enjoy the best music. Now use your weapon, y'all.